Hi there, it's Rob. Welcome to another of our tutorials on the Camsys Magic Q. Uh, this one is about getting started. Uh, a previous one was on the hardware and the front panel of the desk, so you should probably check that out um, and just find your way around the hardware desk. Just to remind you, the hardware desk looks uh, like this. This is the one in the UT. Uh, in the last tutorial, I went through some of the different areas and the different functions uh, within those areas of the desk itself. What we're going to be using today uh, in this screencast is the software that's on my Mac. So while the uh, the software is exactly the same and all the functions are the same, it'd be very clear to show you uh, there will also there will be some changes um, with the layout of the bu the buttons on the software uh, in relation to the original desk. So. So that's the real thing. Uh, let's go straight over to the software and um, let's go straight over to the software and we'll have a look at it. I'm just going to boot it up on my Mac so you can see what it looks like. Um, running it on a Mac is slightly different. Now the first thing I get is an option that asks me if I want to continue last show. That's what I want to do and that's the option you get when you boot the, uh, boot the desk. Now I've got this, um, this uh, bit of the software set up pretty similar to how uh, the, the one in the UT setup, so it's kind of uh, running the same show file and it looks similar. There's a number of different looks um, uh, and different colors that you can set, but I've set the one uh, same as the UT, so it's kind of recognizable to you. Now, when you continue show, what it actually does is it loads up the last show that was in the memory. Now, if you're lucky, that might have been the UT default template, or uh, it probably is actually more often than not going to be the last show that was in there. Now, if you start programming with someone else's show, you might sort of end up, they might have made changes or something, so really you want to start with a blank slate. Now, if you start a new show, which is this option up here, it starts the desk completely from scratch. So it, it gives you an option of, a number of options as how do you want to start again, but it basically clears the patch and, and may, means that you have to start from scratch. That's great if you can do it. If you're not confident in doing it, then um, the best thing to do is to load up the show template. Up here on the touch screen, on the touch screen and, and the, the soft buttons on the touch screen, which we talked about in the last tutorial, there's the option for load show. But the reason, the way I found that was that um, when the show started up, I've gone to setup. So I've opened the setup window, and then I should, where it says view settings, I should get uh, load show. So I've hit load show. What it does is it says to me will erase current show from memory. Now that means that it's going to dump the show file out of the current show memory. It doesn't mean it's going to wipe the show bar. So it just means, you know, do you want to make make the uh, make a new show, uh, your default show, um, but it doesn't, as long as the, the show has been saved, um, and the Magic Q also automatically saves shows, it isn't actually going to delete the show. So it's a bit of a scary, um, scary message, but you're going to go yes, Okay, so here on uh, is the list of my um, show files, and these are the ones I just happen to have on my Mac. And the one I'm looking for here is AAUT template, and it's got a slightly longer name, but the one you can see here, and it's uh, you'll see the file extension here is .shw .show. So that's the uh, the main show file. The one next to it is actually the backup. So it's called UT template dims, and it's got a double A at the start of it, so that um, it hopefully appears at the top of the list. Uh, the, the list is generally uh, sorted in um, in alphabetical order. Uh, if it's hit sort by name, um, then it, there's this sort of in alphabetical order. So that's that's how you should be able to find it. So if I hit that show, that should have loaded up this uh, the, the UT demo show for me. Now to show you uh, what that uh, the, what that actually means in practice is I'm going to show you the patch. So if I hit patch, the patch window. If you look down here, I'm just scrolling down here. You'll see. There's a load of head numbers, which effectively are the dimmer numbers, you know, 1 to 120. There's also some um, markings. I've labelled them as to their position as well. So all the ones on LX1 are labelled as being LX1. Um, so basically, all 120 dimmers are on there. If I scroll to, the, scroll to the bottom of the 120 dimmers, the next thing we can see, so there's 120 dimmers which stop there. The next thing is four spot 250s. Now those are the new spots we've got, um, and they're patched up in the default show file. Whether you use them or not is up to you, but it, but they are patched up in the default show file. So the first uh, next set of fixtures are the spot 250s. The next ones after that are the six wash 250s, which we've already got. And then the final ones are the dimmers, 
uh, which run the tech power. Now they are switched rather than dimmers, but they are, are still controlled by the desk. So those basically run from 901 to 924. So that's our patch. That's the, the show patch that is basically default patch in the UT and it's, and it's accessed by hitting the patch window. Uh, you can also make changes to that and we'll cover that in further tutorials. But, in all, but I'm just going to close this patch window now by hitting close, which is one of the top window, uh, window buttons. I'm also going to close the setup window. You can leave the windows open or shut, it doesn't really matter. I'm just closing them for kind of neatness. Now, I don't have the other two screens on my uh, Mac. So I'm just going to use this one screen and it'll involve opening and shutting a few uh, windows. Um, but on the uh, UT MagicQ, you have two external screens where a lot of this information appears anyway. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get back to the window layout that, um, that you had um, if you're, you're used to it. I've set out a couple of window layouts which I think are useful in the UT and I'll show you how to get back to them. So the first thing to do is to call up a saved view and in order to call up a saved view what I need to do is hold down control I'm doing it on my Mac but you there's a control button either on the top right or the top left of the window and I'm going to hit plotting. So up here on the soft button on the top right hand side it says plotting. So I hit hold down control and hit plotting and that opens a number of windows. Now on the UT Mac, it, uh, uh, on the on the UT campuses, it opens the windows on all of the screens. Now, what it's done with mine, because I don't have any external screens, is it's opened up uh, some screens uh, here on the touch screen, which would actually be on the external screen. So I'm just going to close those for a second. And what I want to do is I really, really want to call up um, the group window and a couple of other windows. So these are the windows that we normally see. Um, in the touch screen when you hit the plotting uh, when you hit the plotting button. The other ones, the outputs and the programmer and stuff are on the external screens. What I want to just show you is what the active window looks like. So I've got four small windows here and at the moment the group window is the active window because I've clicked in it. If I click into the position window that becomes active and you can see all the buttons along the top change. So I'm going to hit back, go back to the group window and I'm going to try and record a group. So the easiest thing to do to start with in order to call up some channels and record a group um, is to type using the keypad, which you can't see here, but I shall type on my Mac, um, type the keypad and call up the channel. So if I go, say, 1 through 6, and then I hit app twice, it selects uh, heads 1 through 6, which are dimmers 1 through 6, which the ones are on the floor. Now what you can't see there is the fact that they're selected um, because they will appear on one of the other windows. But basically I've selected those heads and if I put at full, they'll be at 100%. Now I can prove that to you. If I open the programmer window, you can see dimmers 1 to 6 are at 100%. So that's appearing on another screen. Now in order to record those dimmers as a group, so 1 to 6, I want to call uh, floor stage right. I'm going to basically record them as a group here. I'm going to record them as group 6, which is in that little slot there. So I hit record. I'm going to type the name. So I'll call it uh, stage right floor. And you can see here in the command line, every time I type something, whether it be call up a dimmers or write something, uh, appears down here in the command line. So I've hit record, I've typed stage right floor, and next thing I'm going to do on the touch screen is I'm just going to press there. So that group now is uh, saved. And if I clear that group, uh, clear the output from that group, just show you again, program is now empty. I can recall that group, so I can go group, that group, and then I can do at 50. And that shows you that group 6 is at 50. Now you can either hit the group button and hit 6 or you can just use the you can just use the uh, the button on the touchscreen. Now that's got a red uh, square in it which means that those that group is in the programmer. In order to clear the group from that programmer I'm just going to hit clear. And that means that basically if I recorded a state now nothing would be uh, recorded because the programmer is now empty. So that's how you record a group. 
basically, when you're recording things, often um, on the Magic Cue, you basically do the same thing. You hit record and then you hit where you want it to be, whether that be a playback or a, a position palette or whatever. These are the three windows are the palettes um, uh, for attributes uh, of the moving lights. So I could record a, uh, a you know a position palette or something. The ones here you can see at the moment are the ones that are just um, set uh, set up already, ready to go um, when I loaded the show file. But so I've created my group called Stage Right Floor. So I suppose the best thing to do now is to record that as a memory. So I'm going to hit Stage Right Floor, and what this time I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this button here, this soft button here, the top of it on the right hand side of the desk bumps it to 50. So the first bump goes to 50, the second bump goes to 100. Now also, if I use the wheels, obviously on the real desk you have the wheels, here I have these little things uh, on the right of the right of the soft green, I can set it to 75, wheel it down, whatever. So that's so I'm going to set it to 72 and I'm going to save that as a queue. So what I'm going to do is I'm record it as a, as a, as a first queue, let's call that um, preset. So I'm going to go record I'm going to hit preset, which is going to record this uh, stack um, with the name of preset. So I've hit record, I've typed it in, and I've put it onto playback 10. Now if I show you, I've cleared the programmer, if I show you there's nothing in the programmer. Now if I open the output window, you can see there's the output window there. Now if I fire up this queue, if I push the fader up, nothing happens. What I need to do is hit the go button on this queue to make this queue happen. So that's a fade up of the first queue over three seconds. In order to see that what's on this stack, I'm going to double click the S button and there you can see both uh, the first queue, preset um, and then the time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my final queue. I'm going to close that again. Now if you remember I've, I've uh, I've cleared the programmer, so there's nothing in the programmer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my groups button. I'm going to do my group at zero. So you can do uh, stage right floor group, and then I can hit this soft button up here, which is at zero. And then I'm going to hit record and call this one um, group out and enter. If I clear away now, and you just have a look at the stack. You can see uh, the second queue is group out. Now, that's over three seconds, but I want it to snap. So I'm going to highlight that field, and I'm going to hit zero and enter. And that gives me a snap. A snap. In order to um, start off from the same queue again, when I'm in this queue stack, I can select the queue, number one, and I can hit go to queue. And what that does is it plays back the queue, the first queue for me. So we're now in queue one. You can see that those are 72%. And if I hit the go button again, it snaps to zero. So that's the basics of how to record your first queue and your first set of queues, um, and also to change the times. See you again soon.